My guest today is uh, someone I had great pleasure working with a few years ago in, in, in some of my consulting work. And she is becoming, she is an expert in social ecological systems and understanding how indigenous uh, principles, philosophies really underlie a lot of that. And my guest this week is Melanie Goodchild. In the Western world, particularly, and in, in scientific circles, we approached the world as um, decoupled from the social and the ecological. And so the concept of social ecological systems, SES, that's new, relatively new in, in scientific circles. And so when we say decouple, what that means is that there was this view that you could look at something purely scientific, ecological, and not think about culture and spirituality and, and the role that humanity was playing understand that the solutions to some of these really complex problems are not going to be found if we uh, completely ignore out of some type of uh, disciplinary kind of um, narrow you know lens that we're going to ignore where some of those solutions might come i think the innovation that we talk about in social innovation which is an area that i'm studying uh, actually comes from the space in between those worldviews it's not necessarily about bridging them or integrating them. Uh, it's actually about bringing those different perspectives. You know, you could bring in five different perspectives and take a look at the space in between them. And that's might, that might be where innovation lies. In other words, the solution to things. So, so much of what has been what humanity gives to the world comes from our creativity and comes from putting together things, not necessarily inventing something new, but putting together things in a different way. That's one thing that systems thinking and complexity thinking, I think, brings to us is that we have a role to play and that we are part of the problem. Uh, often we want to blame others and, and blame something else. So, you know, we all benefit from the status quo. Um, and particularly you know, when you look at sort of global to the to the regional within North America, we're all quite privileged. When you look at poverty, um, violence, uh, social inclusion, and the issues that happen in other parts of the world, while we have refugees, well, we have our homelands here, and we have been dispossessed of them in many ways through the reservation system, and we still can't access them. And I know how heartbreaking that is. And I think what we're experiencing at a really individual level that's reflected from a global level is a disconnection from what we say Mother Earth, uh, key the land, is that there's a sense of grief there. I think there's actually what we would call an unresolved grief that people are carrying uh, a tr trauma with them. And it's because they're so disconnected from the earth and they can live in systems that allow that to happen. We incentivize you to live in downtown places where it's concrete and you don't really even question that, you know, like your right to, to, to be in natural spaces and, and how much of the natural spaces now are designed, right? They're landscaped and they're, and you don't actually have opportunities. And I think creating more opportunities for more people to connect with the earth in, in whatever, like land-based education, land-based activities, land-based uh, executive professional development. I mean, I've been in some uh, leadership programs and they're all taking place on campuses and classrooms. But I went home this year, uh, I live in Southern Ontario and I went home to Northwestern Ontario and visited six of the First Nations that my family you know, lives in and is from. And I spent time on the land. I spent time in ceremony, I spent time standing on a rock that's three million years old in uh, Pakistan National Park, which is right beside my, my dad's reserve, and spending time with my uncle who fishes and traps and talks about our ancestors and gave me all kinds of teachings, I realized even I, living in, in southern Ontario right now for my education, I'm quite disconnected from, from the land.